Okay, uh, I'm Brian Gordon. I'm the senior programmer for the Gold Coast International Film Festival. And it is my great pleasure to welcome the director, Fred Carpenter. Fred. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the cast and crew of Charlie Mantle, we thank all of you for coming here. Uh, do we have any students here? Do we have any students? Any students' questions? They said to me, uh, uh, give advice to the film students. Uh, get a real job. <laughs> okay, get a real job. But this is Charlie Mantle. Uh, give you an example of what the independent, I'd love to tell you all, I'm an independent filmmaker because I want my independence. I'm independent because Hollywood's not giving me a job. So you have to create your own opportunity. Uh, also, anyone who's truly making an independent film, it's where they're taking money out of their own pocket or friend's pocket and they're making a movie. Nobody's making a movie for over a million dollars as an independent filmmaker, that's big money. You, we're making films for p pennies to maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So. I'm the director, I'm the producer, but I'm the location manager, I'm the toilet bowl cleaner. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one of the uh, partners that was sitting over here, Steve Sage Goldberg, who was the director of photography, he was the film editor, he was this, he was that. Uh, Edward Wall, who uh, produced the movie, basically really wrote the script. Also, uh, one of Nassau County's finest, who really brought a lot of the real cop grittiness to it. Um, the one thing that I didn't want to do with the film is that you always want to make a film that has some art to it and, uh, uh, you know, I call it like, you know, interesting, but if you're going to make an independent film, there's a key word, and that's uh, financially successful, two words. So the bottom line is, is that when you approach it to make an independent film, you know, you can make it where, you know, maybe someone loves the dialogue so much that it's like butter melting in their mouth. Or, 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 or this and that, and they love it, and all you're going to show it is like one or two theaters. Remember, when you're making an independent film, it's not only New York and Long Island. It's Mobile, Alabama. It's North Dakota. It's, it's, it's uh, Mexico. So you want to make a film that is basically commercial and entertaining. Because that, you know, that's, that's, that's what you want to do, because if it's commercial and entertaining, people will get, get to see it. And that's one of the things that when I started the project with Edward Wall, who wrote the script, is we brought a lot of entertaining elements into it. We wanted to be really rough and strong, but at the same time, commercial with a lot of, of real, realistic police elements. But anyway, let me start with uh, any, any oh, oh, I have to apologize. Armin Asante's on a plane, or believe it or not, Russia. Armin has been made like nine movies in the last seven years in Russia. He's a big, big actor and, and, and uh, star in Russia. Uh, Sean Young's supposed to be walking in any minute, and Robert Fernaro, who plays the lead in the film, um, came down with the flu, and they've been really, really uh, disappointed because they've been really helping me promote the movie. And by the way, Robert Fernaro has been recently cast in the HBO um, untitled television series that Martin Scorsese is directing about the mob and the music business, and it's being produced by Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. So. What I, I, uh, we kid around, we said we got Robert as a $5 stock, and once that starts playing, you know, his value will, will, will go up, which means the value of the film will go up, which, which is a good thing, too. Um, anyway, any, any hands, any questions? Well, Fred, I'd like, to, I'd like to start with what a question. Say? I'd like to start with a question. Um, oh, good. I was just curious, um, was, there, was there a film that you saw growing up or before, you know, what, what did you, was there a film that just made you want to pick up the camera or write a script? Oh. What happens is, is that my mother is an Italian, but she's a Jewish mother, okay? She wanted me to be a doctor like my grandfather. She says, you're going to be a doctor since I was a kid. You're going to be a doctor. Well, I went to Stony Brook University, which was a science school, but I got away, I got away from my mother, and I said, you know what? I don't want to be a doctor, so I destroyed my life and became a filmmaker, you know? So that's what, that's what I did. But as far as movies and stuff, I was always a movie buff. I mean... I love, you know, there's a phenomenal movie and it doesn't get the credit for it. I think the only person who came out about it a couple of years ago was Steven Spielberg, is that the movie Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein is basically two genres of, of you know, of fright and comedy. And it's, it's a really well-made, well-crafted movie that's going to be here, you know, long after we're, we're not here. So I would say that film, of course, of course you know, you know, I love the... I, I love William Friedkin. William Friedkin, I think, is the most underrated superstar director with the French Connection, The Exorcist. I mean, just, just, just an amazing. Sidney Pollack, another one, the, the Pollack work with Robert Redford, brilliant. You know, really, really good stuff. 
you know, in my opinion, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, you know what it is? Uh, cops, it's like cops. Oh, wait, let's repeat co- the question. Repeat what? the question, please. What happened? Repeat the question. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the question was, what made, motivated me to make a film about undercover cops? Um, what happened was, what, in very pre-production as far as uh, shooting, uh, doing this movie, Ed and, Ed and I, Edward Wall, were, were involved with another script. And the more I talked to Ed, Ed, Ed knew a world that I don't know, and we could bring a lot more to it. So at the same time, you know, mob movies, cop movies, it's cowboys and Indians. So as an independent filmmaker, we want to make that independent film, but we have to make a commercial, sellable, very entertaining film. Where We wanted to make a film where after you watch it, if you don't like it, you're still going to think about it tomorrow and the next day, and there's going to be something in, in, the, in, in, the, in the movie. Oh, another thing, too, for anybody who's uh, independent filmmakers, the, bottom, the, the foundation of independent filmmaking is the script and the performances. Like, I can, I can do that Martin Scorsese, fantastic, you know, camera moves, you know, really great. But the bottom, the bottom line is, is that it's your actors. You want to have really, really great actors because it'll bring your film, uh, your story, to life. Because, you know, I, I, I could have written the, the greatest film ever made and if I didn't have the actors. And the other thing that I like to do, too, is that, because it's never brought up, is that the editing, is that... I had a phenomenal editor, and Ed will agree, and uh, Steve Sage Goldberg. And what he did was he brought my vision to life, but I let him also bring his talent to it. Because if I'm acting as, a, as a, the director and I'm telling him how to cut it, then th- you might as well connect the dots. Which was good is that w- we discussed the scene, which was really good too because he was the director of photography. And we had, a, we had a vision and then let him bring some of that to life because there's, there's more things that you know, maybe I didn't see. So I think it's really important as the director is to really work side by side with your director of photography, but also with the person who's, who's cutting the movie. Yes, sir, in the red. Sure. Okay. How long did it take to film the movie? And uh, well, I, well, now that's a... Let me tell you, that's a really good uh, question about the, the card and have a license plate. We are actually not finished with the movie. We have still more editing tweaks. Like in the, ba- in the, the nightclub scene, there's too much of the intro. We're trimming that down. The movie's actually going to be finished probably in about two and a half, three weeks. And a license plate is actually going to be going in there. So that was really good that you picked up on that. Um, and the other question was, I'm sorry, the first one? Film the movie, I would say it was about 21 days, but they weren't long full days either. You know, it's, it's basically the, the nucleus of our crew was Eddie Wall, Fred Carpenter, Steve Sage Goldberg, uh, Marianne Giannino, our still photographer, Lynn Ann, uh, and then people that we hired those specific days because we didn't go 21 straight days because you can't make an independent film like that. You may go four hours one day, nine hours another day, and it's really guerrilla filmmaking. Yes, sir. Uh, over this last year, over the last 10 months, uh, we, we, we filmed the movie. And oh, by the way, the movie all takes place in Queens, but a lot of the, the, the footage I shot on Long Island. I shot in Baldwin and in Limbrook. So that's another thing, too, is that when you... What did you say? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, matter, matter of fact, there's an alleyway between the Belmont Movie Theater and one of the other buildings, and that's where we shot that, that alleyway scene. That's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So it's, there's a lot of good. Yes, ma'am. Well, here's the whole thing, is that if you did it the right way, you should get permits for everything. But sometimes you have to like, yeah, yeah, you really got it. Because you know, like the the one scene that in the street when he got into the car and he drove away after the uh, the Russians crashed, like we went by the book. You're talking about. Four or five thousand dollars. So what we did was we didn't go buy the book, and it cost seven hundred dollars. But also too, to be honest, uh, Ed is a Nassau County uh, police officer, so that helped. That your producer and writer is also involved with that, which is good. Also, by the way, the person playing Armand Asante's partner is his dad, who was in- Inspector Wall in-, in real life. So we we got a lot of cop stuff coming in coming into this, you know. Um, yes, this. Ma- what did you say? 
That's correct. We're actually working on it. I think there was two or three, two. On the your. Right, or. Four? I'm going to write those down, but we, we know that too, but so that's good. Right. You know what? I'm glad that you guys got sucked into the movie that you picked up on that. That was good. Another question. Right. 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 Now that's a very good point. The, the whole thing is, and this is what's very difficult when you're making a no-budget movie, is that our lead actor, we really want, well, well, Ed said, like, this guy's got to be washed out. I mean, the problem is he's not a bad guy, but he's got a cocaine problem. And we wanted to see that rough, not shaved beard, and it was very difficult to sustain throughout the 21-day shoot. So that, but that's something that once we get more into post-production, some certain things that we can work on. Yeah, yeah, r really good. Yes, sir. When you watch a movie like, like this, or any movie, right. you're watching a movie and it's taking a break from, you know, too much of the all around. Right. And, you know, if you're a role player, you have to know that that's going to be too much of the all around. But you might use that to go from Pittsburgh to, you know. That's like, correct. An aerial footage is an aerial footage. But outside New York, we take it for granted. People love New York. You know, to the to the people who are who are young and the filmmakers, uh, we have we I think we forget that one of our privileges and luck is that we're Americans. Because do you know what the most uh, uh, requested export of America is? It's the American movie, and very few countries have the opportunity to make a movie. So. You know, I always tell the young people, someone said to me, you know, it's very difficult to go into the business, and it is. But if you're young, and you're healthy, and you're an American, you're, you may not make it, but you got a good shot. You really do. Yes, ma'am, the lady in the back. Hi, I don't know whether it's like me, but I found the sound in sound. That's, that's this theater. Matter of fact, uh, Steve, who's done a lot of the sound work, as he was walking in, I go, Steve, prepare yourself. There's something wrong with the... Uh, the, the, the projection system. They literally put this projection system in like last week, and the sound is like, it, it, was, it was awful. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it, you know what it was? Yeah, it, it, was, it was the projection system and the sound system in the place. Over here, there was a question. Go ahead. What was I hoping to communicate to you through this movie? That Fred Carpenter... The director of this film is going to be a multi-millionaire because of this movie. That's what I wanted to communicate to you in this movie. I made this movie to be a rich son of a bitch. No, 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 no. Hold it. There's some press people here. I did it for the art. I wanted, I wanted all of you that when you heard the dialogue on the screen, it was like butter melting in your mouth. Hold it. Here's a question. This is a really good question. Hard to get actors to work cheap. It's very, you've got to pay Mr. Armand Asante, Sean Young, and some of these other people. But if you have common sense, you know, and I find sometimes that actors, this 82,000 people in the Screen Actors Guild that are not working, and they don't have common sense because I may want to cast them in the movie, and do you know what they're doing? They're breaking my balls, excuse me, breaking my balls about pay, pay? What are you kidding me? I'm putting you in a movie with Armin Asante. You should pay me to be in that movie. So that, that's how you have to approach it. Because the hardest thing to do to, is, is the money. For example, if I ask this man over here, could you give me $10? It's going to be very difficult for the guy to give you $10. You know, It's hard to get that cash, the hard cash. So the bottom line is that if you keep spending the hard cash, you're going you're gonna to blow it. And the other thing is, if you're spending a dollar, you better get back five, ten dollars worth of production uh, value, or, or you're, you're in trouble, it's not gonna happen. And how do you do that? Again, like I told you, I'm the director, the producer, the location manager, I mean, I'm driving all over the place with my car checking out locations. If I paid someone to do that, that's taking the hard cash away from the production of the movie. So you have to have common sense and you have to know that it, it's a sacrifice. So again, the foundation of your independent film is the script and the performances. If you have a great script and performances, Believe me, you're, you're, you're halfway there. So yeah. Well, you're no, some, well, everything is negotiable. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I want to compliment the casting. The guy who was the sadist who killed everyone was fabulous. 
Oh, he's over here. He's in the back. He's in the back. Come over here, Evan. Evan, come on down. Evan, 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 Evan. There. Yeah. Evan, Evan. Come on up front. Oh, listen. I got it. Take it back. I got it. Take it back. I got to tell you this. Eddie, Ed, Eddie Wall told me about Evan. He said, my nephew, and it's, uh, Eddie's nephew, he's perfect for the role. I go, listen, I, I don't know. Maybe we should cast him. He goes, Fred, trust me. The guy's nuts. He's perfect for the role. <laughs> Not really. Just kidding. Just kidding. But, he, but Marianne, Marianne Giannino, um, she was very much involved with the casting. So... So we did that, and uh, a lot of the times there are people that I know and working with, so again, we really, really worked hard because I wanted to give the editor, Steve Sage Goldberg, the best dailies because he's really, really, you know, really good with this stuff, and he just brings that to that, that next level. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, I got to give a lot of that credit to Steve Sage Goldberg. Because what, what, what I did was, um, what, I, what, I, what I did was is that, is that we wanted people, see, we know New York, you know? And it's almost like, you know, we know what it's about. But if you're from Tampa, Florida, or you grew up in North Dakota, we wanted you to feel New York. So you wanted to have that visual, you wanted to have that sound, the, the, the chaoticness of the sirens going from right screen to left screen, you know, just, just so you feel it. And, uh, and that, that also adds to the flavor, flavor of the movie, you know? Yes, sir. What was the feeling when you were very proud to use Patrick as Patrick? Well, that, you know what it was? It was that, that was, I know what you're saying. Uh, we're, ve we're very close to it. Um, you know, as much as Fred Carpenter wants to be a multimillionaire, I don't want to be a whore over it either. But um, I just, it, it, was, it just shows you how nuts the world is. But, you know, I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to make a violent... At, at the edge of your seat movie. Because see, I'm the producer and the director, so I have to, I'm thinking with the producer's cap on. So when they're on the edge of the seat, listen, there's easily 200 people that Mary Angie and Nino and I did not put in this movie. You know now it's gonna be 200 people <laughs> ripping the movie apart because they're not in it. So you wanna make a film that if they don't like the movie or they're gonna rip it apart to someone else, when someone sees it, they're on the edge of their seat. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not easy out there. I think everyone should be very, very happy that we have a wonderful police department. I mean, believe me, it's, it's, it's thank God, you know. Uh, go ahead, any other questions? Yeah, uh, yes, sir, uh, ma'am. What, uh, I couldn't hear the question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was uh, all the same. Well, it was good to pick up on that. Well, they were Hebrew, you know, they were Jewish Russians. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's, oh, 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 a couple of things. That's Steve Sage Goldberg. Steve, stand up. Steve, Steve. Who's also an actor in the film? Oh, in the back, Eddie Wall. Ed, you want to stand up? Turn around, Ed. Right there. Uh, any more questions? Yes, sir. No, let me, th this man brought up a very good question, especially if you're a young person. He said to use storyboard. And that's almost like, almost like, I don't know, like the, the cool thing to do is storyboard. Here's my thing on it. And again, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an animal. I'm, I call my, I'm an animal filmmaker. If I'm, like, if I'm doing a close-up of, of this lady right here, right? I write, a, I write close up. Now, a storyboard, I can draw the close-up, but I don't have the money or the time or energy to, to do all these drawings. It's not really necessary. What happens is when you're making a Hollywood movie, and by the way, last summer, the average Hollywood, this movie came in under a little under $100,000. The average Hollywood movie last summer was $112 million, the average movie. So what happens, that's corporate. 
So they want to see what the director's going to do. So a lot of times, you know, they don't talk to you about this. When they're making a, a drawing, a storyboard, it's because so the corporate heads are seeing what this movie's going to coming out with. So there's there's no um, surprise. What did you say? Yeah, yeah, and it's also so it's no surprise. Uh, and another question? I know somebody over here. Okay, well, I want to say you, uh, on behalf of the cast and crew, thank you so much for coming to see. Yeah, thank movie. you, thank you, Fred. Oh, thank you so much. It meant it meant a lot to us. We we all feel like a somebody. Thank you so much.